okay? Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, he's an idiot. Ladies and gentlemen, airlines quietly became banks. Quietly, they certainly did. Ladies and gentlemen, the way this gentleman explains it, we do not care about what airlines became. We care about the information he's discussing because I want to show you the foundation for which SATCOM has been operating since its inception. Because many of you, I've been trying to tell you, you have no clue as to who SATCOM is and its valuation. I will tell you SATCOM's valuation. You, that's right, you heard that financial term. I will tell you SATCOM's valuation at the end of this video, and then you will understand. You will understand why this man keeps talking about J.C. Penney's going bankrupt year after year after year. Do you know how many times these airlines has filed bankruptcy? Do you know the billions of dollars they got from the government? Do you know the type of control airlines have in our economy? And they're bankrupt? Ain't that interesting? So let's have a discussion. Now, it's morning time. It's 6.56. The dogs are up. And let's just say we, we had to get several understandings over tonight because they woke me up like five times. And I'm telling you the amount of rain that came down. I had a bucket sitting out there that I was using to clean things. It is my mop bucket. And I set it outside. But I set it next to the... Uh, fifth wheel ladies and gentlemen it's been out there since Wednesday that bucket was half full of water this morning when I emptied it half full that's how much rain we got they're gonna say we only got a half inch of rain we only got two inches of rain ladies and gentlemen the amount of water in that bucket was over six inches that is how much rain we've got over the last couple of days Hold on, uh, Max is trying to sneak his way out. Max, go home. Home. Sorry. Um, I have a propane heater, and if you guys know anything about the Mr. Heater Big Buddy, well, the Big Buddy heater has a grill on the front, and I also have a stove fan attached to the heater, but it's not mounted to the heater. It's just attached. And he has a habit of going near it. I told you the first time he went near it, I smelt burnt fur. Like that bear who just couldn't let go. And so I had to let him know. Keep your behind away. But he just keeps putting his behind near that fan and that heater. So now I just keep him away altogether. And because of the way the heater is designed, I can't prop it up on anything because the grill gets so hot. If it were to fall over on the rug or something, it would set that junk on fire. And I ain't got time for no fires, y'all. I done had a fire before. I don't want no more fires. No more fires, because once fire gets out of control, ain't nothing you can do. Now, I got insurance, but I ain't got that type of insurance because I lose too much. And they can't replace some of these memorabilias. Memorabilias? That's right. Let's talk about some memorabilias. Aliens! quietly became banks let's and the fact that i just put banks they kept putting bankrupt bankrupt that ain't got nothing did you not pay attention to the word people bankrupt pay attention it's all about finances it's all about reality so in a moment i'm going to interrupt him like i always do and I'm going to explain to you exactly what SACOM has been doing. And some of you are going to get it. Uh-oh. It says I ain't connected to the internet. I think you need to retry because I am connected. Some of you are going to get it. But then some of you are not going to get it. <laughs> and then some of you really are going to get it. You're going to get it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, it doesn't matter if you get it because SACOM's existence doesn't depend on you understanding its strategy. SACOM's existence doesn't depend on what anybody says. You see, 
the first thing they want to say about a company that is doing something that is exposing what all the other companies are doing. See, you all are not supposed to know about this. This is what they do behind the scenes. Uh, there is a video on YouTube, and I advise all of you to watch it. It is about the billion-dollar uh, buildings that are empty. Why billion dollar buildings are why most skyscrapers are empty or something like that? I don't know the title of it. Y'all gonna find it, just look for it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it ain't 30 seconds. Okay, this thing is 16 minutes and 45 minutes long because I was watching it when I got up this morning on my cell phone. See, when I say YouTube thinks it knows what I'm interested in and it doesn't. I had to find what I'm interested in because YouTube thinks that its algorithm will do what I needed to do. It ain't gonna do what I needed to do, okay? It ain't gonna do. Last year, for the first time ever, the public got a glimpse into the financials of airline frequent. Hold on now. United Airlines Holdings Incorporated. United Airlines Incorporated. Ladies and gentlemen, this is because they're a publicly traded organization. So they can't keep their finances hidden like the courts. Okay? They cannot keep their finances hidden. They're a publicly trading organization, so their finances are public. Uh-oh, we're going to find out some stuff. Uh, young man, could you please continue? Let's see if he wants to continue, y'all. I don't think he wants to continue. Nope, I, I clicked on play. I don't think... Oh, it's still spinning. It's got me going around in circles. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Little high high like a bird up in the sky. Y'all know the song? Give me one second for it to start. One second. Oh, I see what it is. Flyer. It was just... There he is right there. It doesn't like the overlay. And what happens is I'm using the video. I'm recording a video and using the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the size. And that will probably take away from the strain on my system. Because right now, it's a strain on your system. And I, let's see if I can, it, he's going to still talk. Uh, let, let's pause you for a second, homie. Look at that. One point. Eight million views. Just this, and it was only eleven days ago, y'all. Eleven days ago, one point eight million views. Why so many people are interested in airlines quietly becoming banks? He's got three point nineteen million subscribers, and all I can tell you is I don't believe it, but I do believe it because you see, this is what Google does. See, he gets sponsors, and his, well, not him. I don't know this young man. I don't know who Wendover Productions is. But I do know that the way YouTube does things, the way Google does things, is it's advertisement. So when he gets sponsors and he advertises for the advertisers, then Google then promotes the advertisers and lobbies them for more business. Google, that's why if you notice, I just pointed out to you, who, ladies and gentlemen, these idiots are sitting up here putting three and four commercials at the beginning of videos. And now, while you're watching the video, I was watching the news the other day, and Google gave me, in, in, in less than 20 minutes, 17 commercials. Because that's all they're interested in. Ladies and gentlemen, if you pay attention to the Matrix, they think they got you guys pegged. They think they got you pegged. They think that you're going to like their junk so much, which is why I have the commercial blockers. Why? Because I don't care for commercials. I hate commercials. I don't watch commercials. I don't buy anything because I saw a commercial. I don't buy anything because I saw an advertisement. When I was a kid, well, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, we learned about commercials and we learned about peer pressure. Commercials are nothing but peer pressure. I decided I did not want to be pressured into doing anything by any peer. So I decided that no one would talk me into doing anything. Commercials are designed to talk you into doing something you normally would not do. 
I don't go to McDonald's. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't been to a McDonald's in eight months. And when I did go to that McDonald's back in March, I only went there because I was on a bus taking a long trip, and that was the only place they stopped at. However, I don't go to McDonald's. I, I Burger King, uh, I did buy one of the no meat burgers because I wanted to try it, and it was okay. It wasn't the best, but it was okay. And Carl's Jr. and Arby's, I ate the fish because I don't eat meat. But Arby's, because they don't sell fish all the time, I don't even go there anymore. Because our roast beef, I, I ain't got time. I don't eat meat. So, I don't do fast food. When I go to the store, I was just looking at the store I went to. It's called Grocery Outlet. We're going to get to the show in a second. And I went to Grocery Outlet, and they had these little products that they have. As soon as you walk in the store, that's to make you want to reach and grab. But this time, yeah, I had some time. So, I said... You know what? They got some pretzels here, and these are, well, they're not pretzels. They're walnuts, and they're made by this company, and they, they're walnuts, and they're different types of walnuts, you know, different flavors. One of them had chocolate-covered walnuts. The other one had honey-covered walnuts, and I'm like, okay, you know what? Walnuts, I'm not a big walnut fan because I can't eat too much. Walnuts are very dry to me. I said, but these got some flavor to them, so let me try them. Things are $6 each, so I bought two of them. Expensive, but I said I'm gonna try it. See if they're worthwhile. It's a snack. It's the only snack I got. I said if I'm gonna get a snack, it's gonna be healthy. Peanuts are healthy. Got a lot of health in it. Protein. So I said okay, fine. They didn't taste all that great, but they were okay. They didn't taste all that great. They were okay. They were not definitely not worth the fourteen dollars combination. Okay, just not worth it. So, let that be a lesson to you. When you're going into the store, do not settle for that junk that's right at the front door. Do not settle for that junk that's at the register. Okay, that's clickbait. Do not settle for clickbait, people. Now, I knew better, but I said I was in the mood for a snack. This was a store I was unfamiliar with, this particular grocery outlet. But because it was in a city, I had not been to that grocery outlet in that city before. And... I needed something to eat because it was first thing in the morning, top of the morning to you. And it was 1030. I hadn't eaten. And I knew I was going to get a headache because I was out and about. So I needed to eat something. But I'm going to tell all of you, do not go for that junk. Do not let the advertisers do that to you. You be in control of your buying habits. Do not let Google, do not let Amazon suggest what you want. You make the determination as to what you want. Amazon, what they do is they put the items that they want to sell right in front of you. That's why you have to go through the list. Now, right now, so that I don't have to deal with anything being backlogged on some shipping container, what I do from Amazon is I order strictly from their warehouse. Sold by Amazon, I mean shipped by Amazon, or sold by somebody else. But everything I order is shipped by Amazon, so it's in their warehouse. I don't have to deal with, oh, it's on a shipping container 50 miles off the shore. You're going to have to wait another year before you can get your item. Not going to go through that. That's called critical thinking. Let's critical your thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about airlines and how they became banks. They technically didn't become banks, but they became banks. Listen to something. We're not going to listen to the whole video. Not going to listen to the whole video. Ain't no reason to listen to the whole video. So hold on. Programs. What they saw was truly astonishing. During the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, airlines were hemorrhaging money. And so naturally they looked for a loan. United, for example, sought five. Hold on, five billion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, they were hemorrhaging. So let's find out what did they do to take care of their financial issues. Billion dollars to tide the company over until travel came back, but like with any loan, they needed to put up collateral. They needed 
to offer something to the bank that it would acquire if the company failed to pay the loan back. The problem was, United wasn't worth much at the time since, of course, it was hemorrhaging money, meaning it would have had to offer a huge chunk of itself as collateral. Rather, they decided to offer one of their subsidiaries as collateral, Mileage Plus Holdings LLC, essentially their loyalty program. Of course, given that United is a publicly traded company, they have various financial reporting requirements, including the obligation to file a Form 8K with the Securities and Exchange Commission whenever a major business event takes place, such Ladies and gentlemen, they are a publicly traded organization. So when there is a major financial event that happens with the organization, such as a $5 billion loan, they have to report that. I want you to pay attention to how they report this information. This is what's important. The finances. We're only interested in the finances. We could care less about the airlines. We could care less about them becoming banks. What we care about is how they're doing their financing and how they're listing things and how they are calculating things. Because guess what? Mr. Trump does it. He told you, it's a sport. Taxes is a sport. Each one of these banks, or excuse me, airlines, well, anyway, each one of these banking airlines receives tax breaks, which is called a tax write-off. A tax break is nothing but a tax write-off. A tax write-off is nothing but a tax credit. When I keep saying tax credits, you all have to start thinking about, wait a minute, wait, if, if the government gives someone a tax break, they just gave them a tax credit. Oh, really? If the government gives someone incentives, they gave them a tax credit. If the government gives someone a discount, they gave them a tax credit. If the government gave somebody a charge off or a write off credit, they gave them a tax credit. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all about tax credits. It's all, all about you all realizing that credits from the government are backed by the full faith and credit of the nation, which is lawful money. It's all about you recognizing that, and many people don't get it. Let's see if the airlines get it. The airlines are going to get it, y'all just taking out a multi-billion dollar loan. Of thousands, one line on this document stood out. Quote, multiplying mileage plus holdings 2019 EBITDA by a factor of 12 equates to a mileage plus. Wait a minute. Multiplying the frequent mileage program by a factor of 12? Where did they get the 12 from? Why do you multiply it by 12? Is that like the banks multiplying their dollars by 33%? You guys know about fractional reserve banking. If you don't know about fractional reserve banking where the bank gets to take every dollar you give them, including on your mortgages, and multiply it by 33%, that's right. But if you didn't understand that, that's because you're late to the game because my people have been watching my videos for years, since 2010, and they understand fractional reserve banking. So do yourself a favor. Look up fractional reserve banking. Okay? By the way, he's got 1,800,000 views. You will never see the total number of views on my videos. What you will see is the limited number of views on my videos because Google's algorithm limits that information because they don't want the actual numbers to be revealed. Okay, I had already found out in 2000 and what was it, 2012 from several of the members of the SACOM organization who told me that the numbers on their end were completely different. Whereas I had a video that was showing 1,900 views, but they were showing it getting 300,000 views on their system. And I told him I knew that. I know that Google is not going to give me the right information. Because Google has an algorithm. But anyway, I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, they multiplied it by a 
factor of 12, which equal to the mileage plus valuation of approximately $21 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, it actually had a valuation of probably $1 million, probably $100 million, if that, and they multiplied it so that they got the $21 billion, and then that shows how much their organization is supposed to be worth? Hold on. Y'all need to pay attention. Valuation of approximately $21.9 billion. $21.9 billion. That's the value of United's loyalty program, according to the company, and this loan. Similar financial disclosures from Delta and American Airlines peg the value of their loyalty programs at $26 billion and $19.5 to $31.5 billion, respectively. So, notwithstanding their size, why did these numbers turn heads? Well, because of these. The airlines' market caps. These figures equal the total value- Wait a minute. The market caps, because they're invested in the market. The market cap. Pay attention, people. This is important. The market cap, 10 billion. But their loyalty program, 21.9 billion. This is their market cap. This is what they value, the market values them at because of stockholders and all of that and the investments, 10 billion. But when they do the loyalty program and they multiply their loyalty program by a factor of 12, they're now worth 21.9 billion. Market value. That's why you hear market value. Look at that. American Airlines their loyalty program is a negative 25.5 billion. American Airlines carries the name American on it. They ain't going nowhere. They ain't going bankrupt. The government will not let Make America Great Again go bankrupt. This was one of those too big to fail companies. Do you not remember? They are the lowest valuation. Their market cap is 6 billion. Delta Airlines is 20 billion. Pay attention because I think you're gonna start getting it. You of all the shares in each company. It's essentially a real-time indicator of what Wall Street considers a company worth, given the ebbs and flows in stock prices. At the time, United's was $10 billion, Delta's $20 billion, and American's $6 billion. So the value of each airline is less than the value of their loyalty programs, which is interesting in and of itself, but the airlines own their loyalty programs. Therefore, at least according to Wall Street, airlines themselves are worthless. In fact, they're- Whoa. Whoa, airlines are worthless? Wait, pay attention y'all. $11.9 billion in a negative. $6 billion in a negative. $19 billion in a negative. But wait a minute. Hold on. How could they all be doing negatives and still be in business? Let's talk about it, okay? I need you all to pay attention to what he's going to tell you now. more than worthless, they have negative value, they're loss leaders, and the only thing imparting each airline with value is its loyalty program. This is a less absurd proposition than it might initially seem. In 2018, well before the COVID-induced travel downturn, American Airlines earned about 14.42 cents in passenger revenue per seat per mile flown. But simultaneously, it cost them 14.85 cents to operate a given seat one mile. So the airline actually lost about half a cent for each mile it flew each seat. The company, however, earned $1.9 billion in pre-tax profits thanks exclusively to their $4.2 billion in frequent flyer program revenue. In the US, airports are pl Hold on. $1.9 billion dollars, ladies and gentlemen, in tax credits. 1.9 billion dollars in tax credits. This 
is corporations. And all of you are not getting the fact that you are supposed to be operating as a sole proprietor so that you can write your junk off. Because corporations, ladies and gentlemen, they get benefits. Individual taxpayers do not. Corporations get benefits. A sole proprietor is a corporation. They get benefits. You, ladies and gentlemen, are not receiving your benefits because you are not operating in the proper capacity. Shame on you. A uh, young man, could you please continue? Because I'm getting disappointed in these people not understanding this stuff. It just don't make no sense. It don't. Hold on, y'all. Astrid with ads for co-branded airline credit cards, touting free checked bags and other benefits. There's stuff with lounges accessible to frequent flyers, but not even first class passengers. They're littered with priority lanes reserved for getting elite status members through security and onto planes more quickly. Airlines even have their flight attendants acting as salespeople, reciting credit card pitches at 30,000 feet in exchange for the chance of a commission on a passenger's sign up. The reason why the entire flying process in the U.S. and increasingly other countries seems like a carefully manicured experience nudging you to sign up for credit cards and frequent flyer programs is because of these numbers. Airlines are hardly transportation companies anymore. Over the past 40 years, they've crafted a system so effective, so unbelievable. I apologize for the technical difficulties. I had to go yell at a dog. <laughs> and he... He understands, but he doesn't understand. But he's going to understand because we came to an understanding. You know what I'm saying? I know you understand. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to tell you about the airlines and the type of business they're in. Come on, young man. Go right ahead. Explain it to the people. And sometimes he's not so quick to speak, but he should be coming in right about now, give them some information, please, young man. Crafted a system so effective, so unbelievably advantageous to their own interests, that they are now willing to lose money flying to prop up their frequent flyer businesses. Businesses whose core proposition is giving away free flights. Today, airlines are basically banks. This all snowballed from a concept no different than the loyalty Sorry punch card that. at your favorite sandwich place we're gonna pause this for a second because it wants to do the ad thing you see what i'm saying at least they warn you and i know that you guys are seeing this on my videos and you fly a certain number of times you get a free flight well airlines had already started tracking the activity of individual flyers And this is not me. This is this ad thing that's stopping this. Okay. And so my ad blocker should go ahead and stop this junk. But I'll find out in a second. Because uh, I don't want to know about what Hillary... I'm going to share with you what I intended to say if I had... Ladies and gentlemen... I do apologize for that junk that these idiots just did because it doesn't make no sense. And it it's Google and their stupid little algorithm. Okay, I do apologize that they run commercials, but it is, uh-oh, I messed up. It is important that you guys hear just this next section and then we'll go on and I'll tell you about the structure of SACOM. Okay, for four minutes, we've only covered 30 minutes of this video because it is absolutely necessary. But as I mentioned to you, and I'll continue to mention to you, well, basically, I don't even need him to explain. He's explaining that the airlines have subsidiaries and they make all of their profits off of their subsidiaries. Well, the parent company of SACOM is TTOPP, the Threat Outbreak Preparedness Program. The Threat Outbreak Preparedness Program is the what i refer to as the juggernaut it is the parent company it is the it is the homie of all homies 
it is the one that's in charge as a matter of fact i would love to play the rest of this video but like number I said, of times you get a free sport. flight well airlines had already started Oh, tracking talking. the activity of individual flyers, formal frequent flyer programs became technically and legally possible with the deregulation of the American airline industry in 1978. The first program was set up by a small airline called Texas International, which later merged with Continental, but the first major long-haul airline to do so was American Airlines in 1981. What the airline observed was not surprising. American Advantage members were more likely to choose to fly with American so that they could accumulate enough miles to get a free flight. In fact, they were Now, basically what they're saying is that what American Airlines, passengers were willing to pay more to fly American, that's why American was more expensive. They would pay more to fly American just so that they get the frequent flyer mileage. That's why you guys kept hearing about frequent flyer, frequent flyer, frequent flyer, because that's what they were betting. They were hedging the company's finances on their frequent flyer. Why? Because they could manipulate the numbers. And then they could offset whatever losses they had with the company, what the profits that company was making, and then still get the tax credits. Thus, stay afloat, because all they need to do is pay their employees and still record a loss. If they are recording a loss, ladies and gentlemen, then they don't have to pay taxes on income or, sorry, corporations don't have income. Only taxpayers have income. Corporations have revenue. So if they're not taking as in as much revenue and they write everything off as a business expense, sole proprietorships, y'all should be paying attention. If they write everything off as a business expense, so proprietorships, y'all should be paying attention, then that means they have less revenue, which means they pay less taxes. If they're paying less taxes, even if they're in the negative, they're receiving tax credits. Thus, they get to stay in business like JC Penney's and all the other bankrupt corporations that you've been hearing about over the years. Well, how come uh, Susie and them, they had a company and they went bankrupt and they weren't able to do this? That's because Susie and them didn't know what they were doing. Their tax agents didn't tell them this. They went to places like H&R Brock and that, 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 how, you were stupid program. Don't go to those places. They don't know nothing. Okay. Most of you should be finding yourselves a good CPA. As I told you, um, we are bringing in people into SACOM. We're going to be working exclusively on this from now on. We're going to be assisting individuals not to commit fraud. Oh, God, no. We're going to be assisting individuals to put together their portfolios and their corporations the correct way. We're going to be assisting people in doing their write-offs. We're going to start with the SATPAC groups. We're going to start with the arbitration individuals. And then we're going to progress from there. Again, SATCOM, well, TTOPP at current has more than want you to pay attention two trillion dollars in tax credits that it has taken and sent shares of that tax credits by transference to the other members of the organization which the law allows and SACOM received 30 billion in tax credits now Sitcom 911, I'm saying the name so that the powers that be can go and look. Sitcom 911 is the defrauded homeowners of America. They received one trillion because that was the amount that was awarded as a result of that group. Don't worry about it, defrauded homeowners of America, you will receive your tax transference documents. We were hoping to get everything done by December. That was not possible. Why? Because it took too long for people to catch up, just like you all are just now catching up to this information. Many of you simply still don't get it, like I said at the very beginning. So just imagine the people we bring in, many of them won't get it. Many of the CPAs out there don't get it. That's why you notice not all corporations are doing what these individuals are doing. Not all corporations know how to do what these individuals are doing. Interesting, ain't it?
Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to do what Bank of America did, I mean not Bank of America, American Airlines did, all you got to do is get all their paperwork, study it, go over the rules. Yes, it'll take you about six months. But once you understand what they did, now you can duplicate it. Because they're a publicly traded organization. It's all public. Do you understand? The reason why you can't go after Mr. Trump and his taxes, because Trump is not a publicly traded organization. His taxes are private. He does not have to reveal his private taxes to anyone. What they're trying to do is subpoena them in court cases so that they can prop him up there so that they can embarrass him. You saw when they did get some of his taxes, the first thing they did is they talked about him paying whatever for a haircut. Ladies and gentlemen, he can pay whatever he wants to for a haircut. Nobody can tell that man what to pay for a haircut. And if the tax code permits him to get a tax break for that haircut, sure, he's going to get a tax break for that haircut. Because it's a sport. And with all sports, it's how you play the game. And whether or not you play by the rules. Well, he's playing by the rules. And they want to make it look like he's doing something wrong. I don't like Trump. I never have. I've told you that. But I will tell you one thing. He's gotten himself together with the right people to help do the right stuff for him so that you ain't seeing the IRS still ain't coming after him. They're holding $75 million of his that they're going to have to pay him because they ain't got no choice because he's following the tax code. SACOM will follow the tax code. Why? Because it's a corporation. Corporations must follow the tax code. If you are a sole proprietor, you must follow the tax code. Is the tax code so difficult that you don't understand it? Ladies and gentlemen, United Airlines, 2012. What United Airlines did was I had an individual who I did a seminar in um, Denver. And I, I, I forgot the gold... Gold Springs or something like that. It was one of those springs. And I did the seminar. And there was a young man who sponsored the seminar. And there was another young man who invited me. Um, there were two of them. Um, one's name was, let's say it starts with an M. The other one was Postmaster. And they invited me and I went there. And Postmaster and Mr. M. And I drove from... Mr. M's house, I stayed at his house. We drove all the way in a car to this other location, which was several hours away. We get there to the seminar, and I find out that the guy who's doing the seminar, who is the one who invited me to do the seminar, is charging people on top of what we agreed. Ladies and gentlemen, he's charging them almost double what we agreed. He gave all kind of excuses, but we had already accounted for the venue. We had already accounted for the venue, but he's charging people at the door. And that pissed me off because you don't get to make a profit off of me. That's not part of the agreement because everybody knew at that time when I did a seminar, I, you only paid me for my time and my expenses. I didn't make a profit doing seminars. You only paid me for my time and expenses. People, I didn't make a profit. Because that wasn't the game. I wasn't playing a game with people. I was there just to give people information. People said, well, why don't you do a book? I am doing a book. All of these videos are your book. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that experience um, led me to taking a flight. The young man's mother was an employee of United Airlines. And when I took the flight, she let me get one of the benefits. One of her uh, wasn't, um, you know, employee benefits. And so I booked the plane and the plane uh, attendant bumped me. Well, I didn't understand the process, so I asked. And she gave me an attitude. And so I asked for a supervisor. When I spoke with a supervisor, and I promise you, I'm not giving her an attitude. I am basically explaining to her and asking for somebody to explain to me what's going on, telling them that this is my first time doing this. 
and these prejudicial punks, because it was a race thing, kicked me out of the airport because I complained. Now I had to take a different way home, which means I now had to take a bus, which was a greater expense. Ladies and gentlemen, United Airlines and me, we still ain't finished with that. I'm not even going to mention to you about the TSA. When I took a trip, went all the way to New York, and then those idiots would not let me get back on the plane to come back home. They did that intentionally. And pretty much told me, <laughs> you ain't getting on no plane. And I had to take a bus all the way back from New York back to California. Wasted a lot of my time. TSA and I, we ain't finished. Do you see what I'm saying? No, many of you don't get what I'm saying when I say we're not finished. Ladies and gentlemen, those individuals are indebted to me. I gave them my complaint. I lodged a complaint. I did not just sit back and let them do that. Of course not. Why? Because all I need to do is let them know, hey guys, here's what you're going to do. You're going to pay me for that time. If you refuse to pay me for that time, then we'll just arbitrate. And I'll put them in an arbitration agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, you can take the contracts that are online, that we put online. You can just copy the arbitration agreement and put your complaint at the top. Leave the arbitration agreement as is. Put in the dollar amount for the arbitration agreement. Tell them to answer your questions. Make sure your questions are legitimate questions. Dealing with that legitimate situation. Do not bring up all of that YouTube stuff. Bring up only the facts. At least five to six questions is all you need. And you send it to them. And you still keep the Arbitration Association. Why do you want to keep the Arbitration Association as it is in the contract? Not so that the Arbitration Association can make money off of you, but so that you can have a third party. Now, if you want to use your own arbitrator, knock yourself out. But then now you don't have somebody there to fight for you, somebody there to do what you need to do. Ladies and gentlemen, SICOM Arbitration Association, within the next month, will be going and filing a lawsuit against the courts for interfering with the right to contract and interfering with the arbitration process in violation of their mandate to promote arbitration. You see, there is a national policy favoring arbitration. The courts have been ignoring that national policy because of their long history of hostility towards arbitration. Again, I'm not no joke. Yes, they're going to come after me for that. I don't care. Because the lawsuit's going to be filed anyway, whether they come after me or not. And then we're going to take all of those arbitration awards that were denied, that were denied beyond the 90 days. We're going to bring them all into the same case. We're going to make it into a class action. Guess what? Now we get to go to the Supreme Court. I'm not no joke. Okay? But in the meantime... We're getting ready to notify the people who just filled out the applications at the beginning of this month, and the due date was the 21st, last Monday. And so we're just getting ready to notify them of what's going to be required of them. And then by the time of the second week of January, we should start the training. They will know exactly what we're doing, and they will be trained separately from the SACOM organization. Why? Because they will not be under the SACOM organization in doing this. We will, just like American Airlines created a subsidiary, we've already created the subsidiary that they will be operating under. Okay? Just that simple. You guys need to understand the whole corporate scheme, the whole game is a game. Once you understand the game, you got a peep game. <laughs> Look at that. He said you got a peep game. He trying to act like he gangster or something. You, you ain't gangster, mother. You, I, I, I know what gangster is, and you ain't nowhere. Okay, I'm sorry. A cap in me? Bust? No, you're not going to bust no. Okay, I, I, no, no, I, I understand. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Back to the hotel. Skilo. To the hotel. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, so that all of you understand, 
you have a problem with someone, you have a problem with a government agency, you have a problem with a government employee, don't argue with them. Complain to their supervisor. The supervisor didn't do anything, don't argue with them. Complain to that supervisor. Once you go up the ranks, at the same time, you send them a nice little letter with an arbitration clause. You can send them one of the contracts. Again, it doesn't matter how they respond if they don't provide the information that you're asking for. Sit back, relax, give them their notice of fault, opportunity to cure. You must understand, like I said from the very beginning, this is all about those unilateral contracts. This is all about those consent performance contracts that they do with people. When you go to the DMV and you fill out an application because they make you think you have to, to get a driver's license, or when they pull you over on the street, making you think that you must comply with the trafficking laws when those laws are only for commercial vehicles. Shh, don't tell nobody. Then you just simply create the contract, ladies and gentlemen, and you, what you do, when they default, you forgive them the debt. Do you need the arbitration? No, you don't need the arbitration. The arbitration is to give you further documentation and for you to have a judgment of a court. Why? Because the arbitration process is a court, people. The arbitrator is a judge between the parties. Wait, hold on. We're we going to pull up a case text so I can show this to you because some of you guys don't get this. This is the clerk of the court being uh, a part of the executive branch. That's what this uh, research right here was because everybody keeps thinking the clerk of the court is an officer of the court. The clerk of the court is under the executive branch and they are there in the court and then the court makes them an officer. Now, let's see. A B I T R A T O R is a J U D G E B E T W E E N T H E P A R T I E S. Enter. Arbitrators a judge between the parties. Arbitrators a judge between the parties. Arbitrators a judge between the parties, which means when an arbitrator reaches a decision, pay attention. Ordinarily, absent an agreement between the parties to limit the arbitrator's authority, an arbitrator is the final judge of both the facts and the law. I didn't write this, ladies and gentlemen. So now you have a judgment because the arbitrator, when they sit, they sit as a tribunal, a court. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! That's why an arbitrator is a judicial officer. You guys haven't seen that video. If you haven't, I'm sorry. Arbitrator acts as a private, extraordinary judge chosen by the parties to give judgment between them. So that's why you want an arbitration. Everybody keeps thinking that they have to get their arbitration awards confirmed. You do not. You already have a judgment, people. You already have a judgment from an arbitrator. That's the thing. But the one thing that I can't make them pay. You don't have to make them pay. Forgive them of their debts so that you can be forgiven of your debts. Send them a 1099-C. Do your research on 1099-Cs. That's what we're getting ready to do for you people. Do your 1099-Cs. Send that to them mother... And write the junk off, ladies and gentlemen. Write it off. I don't know what's wrong. I keep yelling. I keep screaming to you guys. Understand your position. Understand your capacity. An arbitrator is a third party, neutral party, who serves as a judge for the arbitration, which means they serve as a court. Okay, watch this. Give me a second. An arbitrator is a judicial officer. An arbitrator is a judge, ladies and gentlemen. An arbitrator, by law, not by my words. See, again, that's what I do. I show you something went wrong. Well, you better make it go right. Know what you're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, not by my words. These are what the courts have been saying for decades. An arbitrator is a judicial officer. They have been coming after arbitrators who work for private associations. 
I tried to help one such association where they came after them, but the individuals weren't interested in listening to me because apparently what they were thinking was better. I have a couple of people who have done arbitration agreements against some cities and these cities have retaliated. They don't seem to understand the position they stand in, how much better they are that they retaliated. Again, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. Today is the day we're supposed to have the new contracts up on SAA Limited. It won't be until Tuesday. I apologize. I'm supposed to let you guys know that. It won't be until Tuesday. But for all of you who've had people retaliate against you, all of you who've had people sit up there and ignore your awards, you get to come back to the arbitrator to ask for a reissuance of an amendment, amended judgment. And you get to get that because why? They violate the agreement. Arbitration is a judicial proceeding. Arbitration is a judicial proceeding. Arbitrators perform a judicial function. Now, hold on. An arbitrator is a judicial officer invested with judicial functions and acting as a quasi, in a quasi-judicial capacity. I did not make this up, ladies and gentlemen. Do you understand? This was the most ingenious thing that I could have done at the time is found an arbitration association, not run an arbitration association because I didn't want there to be a conflict of interest. No, I founded the arbitration association, not funded, founded. I started it. I came up with the idea. I put together the capital to get it started. I stayed away. I didn't receive any benefits. I didn't even receive a return on my investment because that's not why I founded it. Okay, and the reason why I didn't receive a return on my investment, because if I had received a return on my investment, somebody would have said that was fraud. Do you understand? So I just founded the organization and I am listed as the founder, but now I'm also listed as a subcontractor, different capacity, okay? The arbitrator enjoys judicial immunity. That will never change. Why? Because a AAA and JAM, oh, JAM, JAM is another arbitration association. It's run by mostly retired judges. Okay? So JAM and the American Arbitration Association will never allow the arbitrator to lose their immunity or their capacity to act as a judge between the parties. So you ain't got to worry about nothing like that. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to let you know how SACOM is structured, how you should be structured, how you should be operating. Look, we can change the entire way the American system of finances operates. Individuals will stop treating you as if you're a second-class citizen if you do things the right way. You have some studying to do. Many of you get too distracted. You're watching too many movies again. The Matrix, I did not think they were going to do something as good as what they did before. Now that I understand more about The Matrix, I just did a video yesterday explaining what you should watch first before watching The Matrix. Once you watch that, then you will understand the value of this Matrix resurrection. Okay, you'll understand every aspect of it from what I've explained and what the gentleman is explaining in the video that I'm commentating on. Understand what's going on. Understand what's going on. Understand the foundation of what's going on. Once you understand the foundation of what's going on, que sera, sera. Or que sera, que sera, ladies and gentlemen. So while you all are lost in emotion, understand society is designed to distract you. Pay attention to the distractions because in the scripture, Satan is the king of distractions. That's what he does. He distracts people. He draws your attention away from what you should be doing. Stop getting distracted. Stop getting distracted. This is 2021 going into 2022. Why not fall as a sole proprietor this year? Oh, I'm sorry. I was going over case law yesterday. And one of the case law I went over was an individual. It spoke several times about individuals who were able to amend their filings when they were being accused by the IRS of frivolous filing or filing something wrong, if the sole proprietorship turns out to be 
you can't do this. Uh -uh, this is not permitted. Then fine, do an amended filing. But for right now, if you did a sole proprietorship and you wrote off your expenses, the expenses you could write off, holy, you save yourself a lot of money. But I filled out one of those W-2s. You did fill out one of those W-2s as a sole proprietor. It's supposed to be a 1099. But your employer is not going to list you as a sole proprietor. They're going to list you as a W-2 worker. You're a gig worker. But you have to be able to explain that. Don't go off of my videos. Do your research, people. Do your research. If I come to work for you as an employee, no, I'm not coming to work for you as an employee. Why? First, I don't get employee benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, if you work for a company, you don't get employee benefits, then you're not an employee. Ladies and gentlemen, if you work for a company and you don't get employee benefits, then you're not an employee. Ladies and gentlemen, if you work for a company and you don't get employee benefits, then you are not an employee. Employees get the benefits of the company. Employees have no liability. The company assumes all liabilities. Employees have health insurance. Employees have those 504897BK uh, things. Okay? Understand what an employee is. And understand that when you go to an employer or a business owner, they only hire you to do a job. Pay attention. That's not in my job description. They hire you to do a job. You are a day laborer. You are there to do a job. Now, employees get a salary. Do you get a salary? Then you are not an employee. They pay you by the hour. You are a laborer. That's why they do all of the labor statistics. Pay attention. Most of y'all don't understand these things. So don't just start doing something. Because I heard Eon say, <laughs> Whoa, doggy. Don't you dare go out there and say, Eon told me this and Eon told me that. You got to do your own homework to understand this. Just because I highlighted to you that a labor, you're working and you're giving your labor to someone, then you have a right to receive compensation. Every worker is due compensation for his hire. You are a laborer. So if you are laboring at a job, you're not an employee. You're lending your services to that company and they're paying you for your labor. You get paid by the hour, they're paying you for your labor. If you are on a salary, then you're an employee. Managers? And senior officers of a corporation, y'all on salary. Y'all employees. But the other people who work underneath you, those are subcontractors. Oh, I'm sorry. You're going to have to do your own research on that. You're going to have to come to a better understanding of that. You're going to have to better understand how corporations operate. You're going to have to better understand that if you are a subcontractor, you get to write things off. You're going to have to understand if you're a gig worker, you get to write things off. You're going to have to understand as an employee, you don't have any benefits. You don't get to write off anything. Shame, shame, shame. Okay, got to go. Y'all take care. Hope this information was beneficial. Adios.